Welcome to Inside New York. <laughs> That's a great question. Thank you. Hi, this is Shaka Khan, and you're watching Inside New York. <laughs> Welcome to Inside New York. We are so honored to have back on Inside New York for our special series on African Americans in theater, an icon. I always call him the king of black theater. And I know I'm not alone. It can only be Woody King. Hey, Woody. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Joan. Thank you thank for you coming. For it's been too long. I know. I you know. know? Yeah. I, I was looking over these 26 years and I said, gee, I, I think you were the first person, one of the first people that, you know, introduced or that I followed that it was like, you know, anytime you had a show, Yes, theater, you were there. Dad you were there. Right. Yeah. Me and, and, and my director, Nat, will yeah. be there shooting. You were there shooting. It was in, and everyone from, you know, they, everybody we, was great. But yeah. all, every celebrity that came through to New York, they came on the show. Mm -hmm. And I know you, you know, you referred them to me. So I want to take this moment to thank you for all of the years. Thank you for having us on, for bringing the word, letting the, letting the public know we're there, letting them know that we are a struggling theater. We've been a struggling theater for 48 years. Uh, and today, shining light on our work with Intezaki Shange is just awesome. Yes. Well, in fact, you know, I heard that there were being special tributes, as there have been, uh, to Entezaki Shange with the sad passing of her last year. And I said, I have to have someone come on to talk about Entezaki Shange. And I started reaching out to people, you know, thinking they would know somebody. And then I said, I know somebody <laughs> who could be better. Woody King, yeah. it all started with you. Yes, yes. And I was just talking, in fact, to, uh, as you know, Leslie Lewis, uh -huh. and I said, you know, a lot of people don't know when they are applauding for Color Girls that it all started with Woody King and the New Federal Theater. Yes, yes. And I didn't even know it until really after the fact because I first saw for Color Girls at the Public Theater. Uh -huh. A lot and, of people. And I thought that was, you know, wow, cutting edge, da da da. But it's like best kept secret. No, I, well, well, I was, I was, I was sort of like involved. At the, it moved from my theater yes. and a deal with uh, the public theater. Yes. And that time, Joseph Papp was running the public theater, and it moved from there to Broadway. And uh, New Federal right. Theater was co-producer there. Yes. And uh, from there, I personally. Uh, produced it in Australia. I uh, personally produced it in London, and Ashton Springer and I uh, produced it in uh, Los Angeles. And uh, but I was involved with uh, Itazaki in other plays, you know, other plays, and in her writings that I published in anthologies. Uh, uh, I first saw the play in a bar on East Third Street, a friend of mine was in it. She did not make the move to the public, but she was in it in our theater. Uh, Lori Hayes, I don't know. Oh, I, yeah. I know her. And Judy Deering, yes. they was in the play, actually in it, and Theo Martinez, uh -huh. they were actually in the play at New Federal. But when they moved it to the public, they had to uh, reduce the cast. Mm -hmm. And uh, in reducing the cast, uh, they, uh, uh, I think they reduced the cast mainly be for money, <laughs> you know. Uh, it was a large cast at, at that time that was, that was considered large pretty cast. large. You know, 10 people, 11 yeah. people. And, and, uh, and uh, moving it, Judy Deering became famous 
as the costume designer. She mm. became world famous as a costume designer. Uh, Thea Martinez started writing. Laurie Carlos started writing. And uh, they became, Laurie Carlos became an understudy. L Laurie Hayes became an understudy. Laurie Hayes, let me say, Laurie Hayes became an understudy at the public. And it was like a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience. And we ran for five or six weeks at New Federal Theater in the small theater. We could get only 100 people in it. Um, Joan, the lines was around the block. I went to Joseph Papp. Andy Zaki went to Joseph Papp. R. Scott went to Joseph We were all, uh, we flooded his office. And so he came to see it at New Federal. And he says, okay, I'll move it from there. And he moved it to the public, and the rest is history. Yes. She so, became a spokesperson for African-American women at that time. And, uh, and uh, Outspoken. Still is, yeah. and, and, and I think up until her passing, she was still, you know, one of the spokeswomen. I, I, I went to an early tribute by young uh, poetess and actresses, and um, you know, it, it was just so, um, it was so heartwarming yes. to see how she has inspired this generation, and so. It's from my generation on. I think she's had a consistent voice of inspiration. Yes. And has been a, definitely a groundbreaker. There, there has been no other like yeah, her. I don't know if you know, uh, knew Shirley Prendergast. I, you know, I thought about her. Um, I, I certainly thought about her with her recent passing. Mm -hmm. I obviously at, at one point was able to go to see every show you were doing. I mean, that was like And she lit mantra. so many of, the, of my shows. It yes. was between me and the Negro Ensemble. I would follow her around, begging her to do shows. Yes. Uh, and she said, well, I can't do two at once. I'm doing it, working over here at Negro Ensemble. Uh, uh, but she could not say no to the African-American community. She could not say no if a young producer came to her and wanted her to light the show. She was a master, the first African-American woman in the union. Yes. I mean, that's the, and, that, and to have, yes, performed her craft on Broadway. Yes. Per, I, I read that in, in the, uh, of course, the uh, de description uh, for her memorial service. And all these years, I didn't know that. And when I've told other people that, they didn't know that yeah, either. Yeah, right, right. She was, she was quiet. a very humble individual. It's part humility, and it's part, again, of us not fully documenting our, our, our legends, our trailblazers. Well, you know, it's most just... people don't have shows like you. Most people don't have outlets to uh, document. Um, but, but there, there's a this... few black newspapers. Uh, yeah, maybe three or four, that's and radio stations are down to two or three now. Yeah. Uh, it's just, in, in terms of talk shows, you know, it's yeah. Joan. Oh, Joan Allen. It's Joan you Allen. Do, you do much. I, I mean, what else I, is I, that? I encourage everyone to go see anything that Woody's doing because he and is speaking the Speaking of that, we are having a benefit Yes. called Hattitudes, uh, hats that our mothers, in tribute to our mothers, and doing Easter and Mother's Day, and we're doing it at Tribeca Center for the Performing Arts. It is magnificent. This is the second annual, and we do these little, these events to bring in audiences for our plays, our bigger right. plays. And uh, I gotta tell you, I mean, women just love, they wear their hats, man. Oh, boy. <laughs>